I see you. I am Seth, the man pretending to be the Eye of Sauron. The man holding the Pelantir is Yassine, the cameraman of Agmar. You might have guessed that today's experiment is about optics, and you'd be right. A thin lens is what we're going to be using today. And one of its properties is if light is going into the thin lens on one side, and it's parallel, it will bend. It will deviate in such a way that it'll all pass through a point on the other side called the focus. Well, great. We can use that property to draw a characteristic ray to determine where an object on one side would appear as an image on the other side. We need another ray to find out just where it is by seeing where the characteristic rays intersect. And to find the second ray, we can use another property of the lens and that any ray that passes through the center of the lens is undeviated. It's not bent. So, so, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, so now right through the center. Ah, good. So this, the intersection, is where the image will appear. Okay, great. Call that Y, the object. Y prime will be the image length. Notice I drew the arrow downward for the image and the arrow for the object is upward because it's inverted. All right, uh, so let's put some more labels on. From the center of the lens, to the image, we'll call it V, from the center of the lens, led from the lens, lens to the object, we'll call it U. Ah, so we can get some equations out of this. The first one is a magnification, and we'll consider the experimental magnification. It's just a comparison between how much bigger is the image compared to the object. It's just a ratio. And because it's inverted, y prime will always be negative for us today. All your y primes will be negative today because it's inverted for this experiment, which means the magnification will be negative. Well, if we look at the similar triangles here, if we compared v to u, in other words, we have similar triangles, well, that would give us another ratio to find the same magnification. We'll call it the theoretical magnification. Put a minus sign there, though, to keep consider consistent with the negative values for this one. But the V's and U's you measure will all be positive. Ah, oh, terrific. So that's magnification. And now we have this. A relationship between U, V, and the focus called the thin lens equation. Ah, oh, terrific. Terrific. So if all we did was move, the u to the other side. We got 1 over v equals minus 1 over u plus 1 over f. Ah, that's a linear equation. In other words, this would be the y, the negative 1 over the m, the 1 over u would be the x, the 1 over f would be the b. y equals mx plus b. Ah, okay. So if we could find a series of v values, a series of u values, we could plot this relationship, get a line, get an equation for that line. And from this m and this b, we could find two different values for the focus. How can we find two different values? By concentrating on different parts of the graph. First, we could concentrate on the y-intercept. Through the miracles of modern algebra, we can derive f1, which is exactly what we expect, is the reciprocal of the intercept. Well, we could also look at it another way to include the slope if we concentrate on the x-intercept. More miracles of algebra and we can find F2, which is minus the slope over the intercept. So, just take a look at these for a second. If M is exactly negative 1, as it theoretically ought to be, these two would be the same. But your M will not be negative 1, because this is an experiment, and experiments have error. So you get two values for the foci, and then you'll average them, and that will be your value for your experiment. 
compare that to the Excel.